Anatolia, the Turkish mainland, the cradle of civilizations, witness of the emergence and passing of many civilizations, but also a stretch of fertile soil on which each and every civilization passing through, from east to west, from north to south, has left its mark. Anatolia, a land which God created painstakingly, without haste, as if knowing that every human being he created would have some connection to it. Whether you view the miracle of creation from the summit of Nimrud at sunrise, or from the beach of Gurkova at sunset, you will see his reflection. Whatever religion you believe in, this is a land where all roads leading to God intersect. When you enter a church, you hear the voice of the muezzin calling Muslims to prayer. And when you are praying on the carpets of the mosque, you hear the bells of the nearby church. This land has embraced the followers of many faiths for centuries with great tolerance, which continues still. For the people of the civilizations whose names are imprinted on the pages of history, it took months to reach this land, whether through natural migration or because of war. But today, you are only a stone's throw away from this modern country, full of unlimited hospitality, seeking peace within itself and peace in the world. Cities are like people. They gain their personality from the people who have lived in them, their buildings and their culture. This is especially true for Istanbul. It has seen countless people, countless lives, and numerous languages, each of them leaving their own footprint behind. When you are strolling through Istanbul, you will come across many traces of previous lives, whether in the bowl of a fountain, the bricks of the wall you lean on, or the marketplace where you shop. This city has always been a bridge between the continents, cultures and religions. But it has also seen many wars and invasions and much destruction. Not to mention many legends of love and passion. All the cruelties, pains and joys of mankind have been strung on the necklace of the city. The Bosphorus is a necklace the throat of Istanbul. From one side, it looks to Europe. On the other side, Asia. There are some eyes in this city, observing all of this beauty every day. Hesitant eyes, with branded hearts, existing at the meeting point of life, death and disability. Other eyes and hearts are indifferent most of the time. They cannot know or understand this hesitancy. Who would know that the unique cry at the beginning of life would be the beginning of a lifelong scream? Who would accept that her tiny newborn baby was as fragile as a dry leaf? Who has experienced hesitancy at the same time as the joy of the first steps of his or her son? Who? would dare to say no to their son running and playing in the garden? And who would be so careful of the shells on the beach while walking barefoot? They are here, sitting next to you or behind you. They are the parents or sisters or brothers of thousands of people with haemophilia. Take a close look at them now. 
haemophilia has been a part of their everyday lives for years, and the tiny line passing through the black intersection of life, death and disability has left deep marks on their faces. Although social insurance, the nearest health facility, ambulances, factors and doctors are all lifelines to the people with haemophilia, there are also many problems for patients living in our country. This is illustrated by the fact that the disability rate among people with haemophilia in Turkey is 60%, while it is only 2% in developed countries. These corridors, well known to patients, are at the centre of the Haemophilia Society of Turkey. The Haemophilia Society of Turkey was established in 1992, with only nine members. It became a member of the European Haemophilia Consortium in 1996. It was recognised as a public service organisation by the State of Turkey in 1997. The annual meeting of the European Haemophilia Consortium was organised in Turkey in 1996 and the second International Haemophilia Forum was also held in Istanbul in 2000. The society has strong ties with international haemophilia societies, the World Federation of Haemophilia and hematology organisations. The doctors, nurses and other personnel in the corridors are indispensable members of this huge family. This is a service provided with limited financial resources, but with unlimited love and passion. Demoralised hearts are often reassured by understanding and passionate hearts. Hesitant waiting in young hearts turns into hope in the presence of bigger brothers who have suffered so much and turns into cheerfulness with unification and collaboration and into trust with the love of health personnel. Although haemophilia patients are a small group in Turkey, having social insurance to cover them and treating them at a comprehensive treatment care facility will provide them with greater support in their lives. A cry of a person with haemophilia penetrates our hearts. I want to survive. Survive! Nothing more, nothing less. Living on my own. Let me have my dreams for tomorrow. Do not let my passions dry up. Let me be happy. Unrestricted. Let me have a night without pain and suffering. Let me have winters and autumns. Even if I do not have summers, let me have springs and let my mother have the strength to carry me. I need my mother, and my father too.